I'm going to show you a brilliant attack played in the World Team Championship, currently taking place in Kazakhstan. Remember, if you want to subscribe to the channel, then do click on the button below. It's that simple. So this game played in the match between Kazakhstan and Sweden. With the white pieces from Kazakhstan, Anwar is Magan Beethoven. His opponent from Sweden, Hans Tikkanen. Now this features quite an interesting line for White against the solid Karakhan. It's a bit of a curveball this and might be worth trying. So instead of d4, the knight comes to f3. This was uh, a favourite of Bobby Fischer. And the idea is that it's not so easy for Black to get into the variations with Bishop f5 or knight d7 for various reasons. Um, bishop g4 is the main move here. And now white takes the chance to grab the two bishops. Bishop h5 is, is uh, risky. There's some g4 stuff there. So black exchanges off the light square bishop and then puts the pawns solidly on white squares now that that bishop has gone. Well, it looks absolutely rock solid, but well, watch what happens in this game. Of course, white has the two bishops, that, that's helpful, but still, how do you break down that solid pawn chain? D4, played by white, so claiming the center, uh, well, I mean, it looks very, very nice for White. You know, two bishops, central control. But here's the problem: that after pawn takes pawn, and Queen is looking at the d pawn. Now, of course, White could recapture with the Queen, but this leaves the Queen awkwardly placed. It's attacked here, and Knight a6 with Knight b4 coming. Queen b6, you can see that queen blocks the bishop. Black can be very active here, playing against that d pawn. Black should be okay. Knight takes e4, however, is a very interesting gambit. So now white, if black does nothing, then white is ready just to protect that pawn and bring bishop out and nice position, two bishops, space. So black really ought to take that pawn. Um, Bobby Fischer actually mentioned this line in, in a game that he annotated in his famous book, My 60 Memorable Games. And there he said simply bishop to e3 gives white good play for the pawn. Well, that is also a, a very tricky line, although uh, methods have been found for black to, to neutralize white's initiative. C3, also a very interesting move for white. The, those are the two most popular moves. But Ismagan Beethoven played bishop g5, which has been seen before, but is a little bit unusual. And this sent his opponent into a bit of a spin. Obviously wasn't expecting this. It's very tricky. Of course, white envisages uh, bringing the rook into the center and suddenly there are problems here. I mean, that's the immediate threat um, and, and it looks very scary. You know, if queen takes pawn, rook here, threatening mate, knight comes across to stop and then queen d3, it's very tricky. It looks looks a bit like that, that famous game from um, the 19th century, uh, Paul Morphy against uh, the Duke of Brunswick and, and a few of his mates at the opera. Um, coming back here, probably knight d7, the best move, but still, it, it's tricky, you know, after, after rook d1. In any case, black panicked here and played f5. Well, the knight's got to go back. Came back to d2. Um, and... You could say that sort of black for the moment finds his feet. Queen b2, not such a good move here. That just gives white 
a, a amazing play for, for two pawns because now there's a problem on b7 uh, and white is ready to castle and, and that looks absolutely terrible so knight f6 played and castles queenside so i mean for one pawn white has a fantastic lead in development two bishops and that is black's problem this weak pawn on e6 white's next moves very simple let's attack that pawn so black was obviously hoping that he could hold out here white's play very easy for the moment the king comes up to protect the pawn so how does white break through well another simple move rook e4 attacking the queen which goes back incredibly this has been seen before in a game played in in uh, Reykjavik uh, last year uh, black played queen b6 but I'm afraid he also suffered uh, a quick defeat uh, queen c5 played rook d1 so simple doubling of the rooks on the e-file threatening rook takes pawn and crashing through h6 Okay, we can't take straight away, move the bishop back. Threat is still there. Knight comes, hitting the bishop, which just ducks back. There's, there's no particular rush here. Um, and this is highly unpleasant. So, a ticket on plate, a queen d6 to, to guard that pawn possible to, to take on e6 straight away but uh, white just kind of softened up black's position even more with g4 i mean maybe this is an obvious move um so black really should defend this and only now he took on e6 and you could say this is basically just an exchange of pieces you know um, it's a rough material balance, but now black's king is even more exposed. And you can see how that g4 move just kind of soften this one up. And that helps when it comes to white's next. So, well, white still has to, you know, c continue the attack here. Otherwise, you know, if black develops, gets, gets the bishop out, connects the rooks, then matters aren't so simple. So... White's initiative needs to keep going. So c4 hitting the knight, which moves back, and that was the point. It brings this bishop into the game. Looking at the f5 pawn. Very difficult. I mean, this one is going to fall um, after bishop takes knight, or there's something else that can happen here as well. So rook g8 played. And now, instead of taking on e7, which is probably promising, but this is even stronger. This is very powerful. The knight takes and check. And now the king simply hasn't got a good hiding space. The problem is that actually this rook is loose as well. So that, well, black, yeah, black's king is in massive trouble and, and that rook is going so for example if the if the king steps back well this is this is losing for all kinds of reasons but um you know you can see that it's possible just to uh, win the rook with a double attack yeah i know bishop here is possible but that it's not really going to help the matter help the cause so king d6 played and queen takes knight so basically, after that little exchange of pieces, uh, material is still roughly even, but obviously with Black's King staggering around in the middle, things are pretty bad for Black. Um, and that Rook is loose as well. Knight d7 played. Yeah, there's also a threat simply to, to check here. Uh, well, I mean, there are so many threats here. Knight e4 check. Um, whoops. Knight e4 check, also a threat. Queen f4. And now knight f3. There are lots of good moves here. 
threatening knight d4 mate, so bishop c5. And now white is, is kind of greedy. He takes this pawn on h6, and now there's a bit of a merry-go-round here. I mean, black can't really avoid this. Got to keep hold of this knight. Another check. Another check. And here. So they've arrived back at exactly the same position, except this pawn on h6 has dropped, which means that if white wants to, then knight g5 is simply a winning move here. Uh, black would have to give up rook for knight. But is Magambetov finds a move which is even more decisive. He's having fun here. He played a b4. And this is a great way to end the game. Let me see. If, well, if the bishop retreats, let me just show this one. We get to the king, basically. Uh, if the king comes up the board, we can do this. King here, this is very nice. So the, the king is now trapped. And finally, we get there, queen e4. Um, and if rook g6, well, queen d7, and, and this also leads to, to mate. Uh, well, let me just show this. I mean, obviously, I mean, white is simply winning on material here, but there is a very nice checkmate. It doesn't help that that rook is loose as well. But let me just go to the end of the line. So here, the rook has to, to go in the way. Of course, we can take this. But a really unpleasant move here is queen f7. Threatening knight e4 mate. This is actually the quickest way to achieve checkmate. And if c5, then b5 mate. It's like a problem finish. So queen f7, beautiful move, threatening knight e4 mate. So coming back to the game, um, after b4, in fact, black was a gentleman here. He allowed his opponent to deliver checkmate. He took the pawn and allowed knight d4 mate, which I always think is a really nice thing to do. Some people say, oh, he should resign, you know, you shouldn't go to the end. But I think it's uh, you're paying your opponent a, a, a nice compliment by allowing him to give checkmate. Very satisfying. So, well done to Hans Tikkanen, a gentleman. And uh, well done to Anwar Ismagambetov from Kazakhstan for a very stylish and uh, crushing uh, attack. Very nice indeed. And a line that's uh, worth bearing in mind if you want to play against the Karakal. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, click that subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel, then do check out how you can do that in the video description, either via PayPal or Patreon.com. Thanks for watching.